Okay. So um, you probably heard this before. And in fact, your school counselors will definitely urge you to have a little bit more balance on your list to be sure. Um, but it's really important that you make sure that your admissions data is up to date. Okay. Because if you're relying on information that is maybe even two or three years old, you can really misjudge a school and you know, label it like a safety school when it's really not a safety, right? One really dire example of this is Northeastern. Uh, I think I mentioned this earlier. Their acceptance rate last year was at 6.7%. But even just as recently as 2021, the year before, their acceptance rate was 18.4%. Now, it dropped dramatically because um, it's there was an extenuating circumstance here, right? I think they had over-enrolled the previous year and they didn't have enough, like, space, I guess. And so they had actually had to drastically cut the size of the incoming class. But um, even though they haven't released it yet, though, I have been hearing that it didn't really jump back up to about 18%, that Northeastern is really going to be like under 10% now. Okay. So yes, even though there are going to be cases like this, you should still definitely aim for some prestigious and reach schools on your list. Um, just because like every single year uh, at HS2, we've had success stories of students who didn't even think they can get in, right? So these like certain schools are like maybe labeled out of their reach or may maybe too far out. out. Um, you should really at least have one or two of these dream schools that you should try for, even if it doesn't look like numerically you have a shot. OK, um, just because, like I said, you know, you could you never know. Right. You, this the uh, the admissions office might really like something about your profile and they might decide to give you a chance, even if your numbers don't necessarily reflect the averages of the you know average student who's accepted to their school. OK, so it's definitely worth a try. You definitely just want to go ahead and, and make sure to give yourself, you know, a little bit of that you know chance to be considered. OK. However, at the same time, you also have to make sure that your safeties are indeed safeties. Now, it's, it's really key that you do some research, not just in the overall acceptance rates of the schools that you're considering, but also if you're applying to certain popular majors like business, engineering, or computer science, to find out whether or not there's data about these schools' acceptance rates for those majors. So a couple of key examples here, right? So the University of Washington, pretty popular school for California students because it's not too far, right? Um, has a stated acceptance rate of 53.5%. But if you were to look at their website, if you're an out-of-state student and you're applying for computer science, your acceptance rate is a paltry 3%. That's really scary. Um, Purdue um, was a school that many people widely considered a safety, um, maybe like as recently as like five or 10 years ago. But if you're applying for engineering, the 68.8% published acceptance rate drops down to about 37% for engineering and as low as 10 to 15% for computer science. They hadn't published the exact numbers, but this is kind of the range that they were saying. Okay. So definitely do your research, right? Try to figure out whether or not something is indeed a safety school for you or whether or not um, you had just mislabeled it. Okay. So it's a good practice to also have a more even distribu a distribution of reach target or safety schools, right? This is exactly what we mean by having a balanced college list, because ideally you do want to have some choices. You do want to be able to kind of like compare, because if your list is too top heavy, if you're applying to like eight or nine total dream reach schools, and then just maybe have one or two backup schools, um, oftentimes, especially if you if you just misjudged even those backup schools, you could find yourself in a situation where you could have gotten into only two or one or even no schools, right? And that's kind of a dreadful situation to be in because then at that point, you're scrounging to see whether or not some schools might still be accepting applications, or you may end up having to do a year or two in community college and then just go through this process again. Okay. So um, this is an example, I guess, of someone who would be applying for engineering. As you can see here, the student would be, you know, willing to take some risks going for top schools like Cornell, Carnegie Mellon, USC, like I said, is now under 10%, so it would probably be a reach school for many of you, right? Um, their target schools are Georgia Tech, Rensselaer Polytechnic, and UIUC, right? So the student for engineering would be still pretty competitive for those schools. Uh, and then their backup schools, if they wanted to stay closer to home, there's Loyola Marymount in, in the Los Angeles area and Santa Clara up in the Bay Area. And then Penn State is oftentimes a very good backup school for, for fields like business or engineering because their undergrad ranking for those things are pretty high, but the acceptance rates are actually pretty decent even for those majors. Okay, 
So while I gave an example here of maybe like something like nine colleges, the actual number might vary depending on how many you want to try for. Some of you might be attending schools where your school puts a cap in terms of how many schools you apply to. In that case, of course, you do want to adhere to that as best you can. Um, otherwise, most students that we've worked with will apply to something like 10 to 15 colleges and then apply to the University of California system, okay, because that's one system application, so we, we generally view it as just like one slot or one application.